During the summer of 1941, Axis convoys laden with supplies for Rommel's Africa Corps faced a continuous onslaught by Allied aircraft and submarines. Most of these aircraft were based out of Malta, which would prove to be a serious thorn in the side of Axis leadership. Despite boasting the largest surface fleet in the Mediterranean, including 117 submarines, the Italian Navy failed to restrain the formidable Royal Navy, and the transportation of vital supplies to North Africa remained a major challenge. Rommel's Africa Corps stood as the last bastion of hope for the Axis powers to maintain control over North Africa. Rommel was still in the process of assembling his forces, and to support the Axis buildup, Hitler decided to transfer three pairs of U-boats into the Mediterranean. Admiral Raider protested this decision, as he was in agreement with Admiral Karl Donitz. The Atlantic theater was seen as the decisive battle. Raider was of course overruled, and six U-boats would make the perilous trek into the Mediterranean, transiting the Strait of Gibraltar. As time would tell, six U-boats would not be sufficient to turn the tide of the Mediterranean campaign, and it would not end there. To Admiral Donitz's frustration, more U-boats would be diverted into the Mediterranean. It was to become an unsustainable sinkhole for U-boat operations, diverting precious U-boats from the main battleground in the Atlantic. After a long and eventful stay in St. Nazaire, U-75 slipped out of her U-boat pen to commence her first war patrol under my command. This has been a long time coming, and there has been a delay after delay. However, it feels good to be on the bridge of a U-boat once again. The crew eagerly awaited the upcoming war patrol under the command of a brand new skipper. As the sun began to creep below the horizon, the U-boat pens buzzed with activity. The crew worked meticulously to stuff supply into every nook and cranny of the boat. U-75, a Type 7B boat, was laid down in December of 1939 and finally launched in October of 1940. She has four bow torpedo tubes and one in the stern. The boat is capable of making 18 knots on the surface with her diesel engines and 8 knots submerged with her electric motors. One 8.8 centimeter deck gun decorates the bow of the boat, ready to rain shells of fury upon the enemy. One 20 millimeter cannon, primarily for anti-aircraft work, is mounted aft of the conning tower. Our escort safely led us through the minefields of the French coast and out into the Bay of Biscay. Under the cover of darkness, U-75 headed west toward adventure and the unknown. Our destination shrouded in secrecy. The boat plummeted down past 50 meters and kept on going. The hull groaned and strained as the water pressure increased. The new guys tensed up every time the boat dramatically began to creak. The older officers, however, stood fast, their confidence in the boat's capabilities bolstered by years of experience. The needle on the depth gauge continued to plummet, 60 meters, 70 meters, 80 meters and onward. The boat hit 100 meters and leveled out. This was just an exercise to ensure the boat and crew were ready for whatever would come our way. The Allies are getting more and more adept at countering the Grey Wolves, and we need to be able to dive quickly and deep. 
RAF Coastal Command has been conducting more and more patrols, and radar on warships is only becoming more common. What was formerly known as the Happy Times is starting to teeter out. There was a time where German U-boats roamed the Atlantic and racked up tonnage at an astonishing rate, taking the fight to the Tommies with little repercussions. Now, a lot of the old guard have been killed in action. Just this year, the U-boat arm lost Gunther Breen, commander of U-47, who penetrated Scapa Flow and sunk the Royal Oak. U-99, under the command of U-boat ace Otto Kretschmer, was lost this year as well. It is certainly a difficult time to get my own command. The command was given to surface. The crew and boat handled themselves well and everything was in order. No malfunctions and no leaky valves. We are ready for our first patrol. U-75 barreled to the surface. Once surfaced, I went to the radio room to finally open up our sealed orders. It is unusual for our orders to be sealed in such a way. I knew something was up. I cut the thick envelope open, and once my eyes gazed upon the assignment, I understood why they were sealed. My stomach dropped, knowing very well this could be a one-way trip. U-75 was to transit the Strait of Gibraltar and enter the Mediterranean. Her new port would be Salamis, Greece. U-75 was to be one of six boats forming the new 23rd Flotilla. The orders also specified that we were not to engage any ships under 10,000 tons until U-75 had entered the Mediterranean safely. Once in the Med, it is open season. Our task would not be easy. U-75 would have to penetrate one of the most defensible natural waterways in the world, home to the British Mediterranean fleet and only 20 kilometers wide. One hell of a first patrol. Our mission assignment was relayed to the crew, and the reaction was mixed, understandably so. U-75 would be one of the first U-boats to enter the Med. Additionally, they would be doing this with me in command, their new skipper. Hopefully, I will not let them down. U-75 turned south, towards the coast of Portugal. The first leg of our perilous journey is now underway. U-75 forged her way south and is now positioned just off the coast of Spain. The weather conditions have gotten worse steadily. Wind speeds are now reaching up to 13 meters per second and the waves have started to pick up. At 0600, the bridge crew spotted an illuminated ship on the horizon. This is generally a good indication that it is a neutral vessel, but U-75 turned to investigate. The glimmer on the horizon drew nearer and nearer, and the ship details gradually became clear through the haze. It was determined the ship was flying a Spanish flag. U-75 turned back on her original course of 185 degrees. I had hoped the stormy weather would continue during U-75's transit of the Strait of Gibraltar. However, it seems Mother Nature has other plans for us. Just as quickly as the storm rolled in, it dissipated. We are now just 18 hours away from the Strait. The fog layer is continuing to let up. No contact has been made with the enemy just yet. The watch crew gazed upon the horizon, looking for any sign of smoke or aircraft soaring through the sky. The alarm was sounded. Water rapidly entered the ballast tanks as the bridge crew dropped down into the control room. Two aircraft were spotted, closing in fast on U-75's position. We had been discovered. Thankfully, this is exactly what the crew trained for, and U-75 was at a depth of 60 meters in great time. That did not stop the enemy from dropping their depth charges all over us, though. The explosions reverberated throughout the submarine's hull. Thankfully, the boat was just rattled. 
no serious damage was sustained. We had survived our first encounter with the enemy. Jawohl, Herr Kalloin. Kleine Fahrt voraus. Kleine Fahrt voraus. Hello everybody, Wolfpack here. Welcome aboard U-75 as we begin our first war patrol. We are closing in on the Strait of Gibraltar. We are just over 100 kilometers out and the sun is about to rise. We were just recharging our batteries on the surface before submerging during the daytime. I would like to make the transit at night, hopefully, and maybe even the weather will get worse as we close in on the straight. However, I do not think I am going to be that lucky. Additionally, one thing I want to do is head south just a bit, and we are going to try to hug the North African coast as we move through the straight. Obviously, Gibraltar is going to be heavily defended, and I expect there to be loads of aircraft. That is why I am planning on staying submerged during the daytime. We did encounter some aircraft way up here near CG-85, so I am not too keen on staying on the surface as the sun rises. This should be a fairly interesting start to our series, though. I've been wanting to do a Mediterranean career for a while now, and I figured what better way to start that than to actually go through the Strait of Gibraltar. It is now 7 o'clock in the morning, and I believe it is a good time to submerge the boat. Let's drop down to periscope depth. Ordering PD, if we take a look through the periscope, you can see it is quite bright out. Let's go ahead and drop that down. And the boat is coming down. Let's check on the crew real quick. Everyone's pretty much where they need to be at this point. And down we go. Okay, we are at periscope depth. The electric motors have kicked on now. We are going to drop down to 25 meters now. And we are also going to hop over to the hydrophone and take a listen. See if there's anything out there. We have not encountered any British warships just yet. We did encounter a single Spanish freighter. Let's reduce our speed. Jawohl, Herr Kalloin. Kleine Fahrt voraus. Kleine Fahrt voraus. Those are our motors, obviously, at 180. All right, I have nothing so far, but I highly doubt that will be the case for too much longer. Like I said, I am going to stay submerged for the remainder of the day. At dusk, I will surface the boat and recharge our batteries, and we will proceed through the Strait of Gibraltar under the cover of night. Hopefully that'll allow us to maneuver past all of the escorts while on the surface. Thankfully, we're in a Type 7B. Our silhouette is pretty small, so I'm banking on that to help us remain undetected. Of course, if things get really hairy, we will submerge, but we'll see how this goes. This is certainly going to be interesting. It's go time, folks. It is dark enough where I believe we are safe to surface. First things first, though, we are going to go to periscope depth. Our hydrophone operator did pick up a couple of contacts during the day, but nothing too crazy. They were all quite distant. There are certainly a few patrols covering the street. That's to be expected. We are going to go up to PD and do a quick scan with our periscope before completely surfacing. Additionally, let's go ahead and check the hydrophone. Our own motors. We're only moving at three knots. 
don't have anything out there. A quick scan with the scope will help determine how much danger we are in. What's our battery at? Our battery's at around 80%, it looks like. So we will recharge for about an hour before moving through the straight. We have plenty of battery power to make it through. A prolonged engagement, I think. Boat's at 16 meters, just shy of PD. And we are good. Let's go to the attack scope. Up scope. Okay. Slowly scan. We also want to check the sky for any aircraft that may be patrolling. And there is land. That is the African coast. The seagull scared me for a second. I thought it could have been an aircraft. I don't see any smoke on the horizon. Nothing bearing down on us. The sea is very calm though. All right, down scope. All right, yeah, surface the boat. Off top. Here we go. We are going to start moving at standard speed. We are currently recharging. We will recharge until about 1830. Then we will stop. It should be dark enough for us to transit the straight at that point. How long is it going to take us? It'll take us three hours at this speed to reach this point. So it should be plenty dark by then. I'm feeling pretty confident in this plan. My watch crew hasn't immediately spotted anything. Which is always reassuring. No aircraft were lurking directly above us. U-75 is closing in on the narrowest point of the straight. So far, so good. And I don't think I could have planned things any better. And it seems it is a moonless night and it is very foggy. Like, I cannot see very far out there. Here's hoping a destroyer does not stumble right across us. But yeah, we are closing in on the narrowest point. It's only around 16 kilometers wide. Here goes nothing. That is quite the intimidating distance. I was thinking of submerging. Our batteries are pretty much recharged. They're at around 90% now. I think that is more than good enough. The boat is making 14 knots. You know what? Let's go to full speed. Let's burn some diesel. Our fuel reserve is currently at 90%, so we can afford to do this. Our new home port is Salami's way over here. And we have quite the trek to get there, but obviously I'm okay with burning diesel in the most dangerous part of our trip. Although passing Malta is going to be rather dangerous as well. Do not get me wrong. The entire Mediterranean is a death trap, so it should certainly be a very interesting series. Let's check on the crew. Make sure I have my best and brightest on the bridge currently, and I believe I do. Okay, how long? One hour and 30 minutes. The moon is starting to rise and we have cleared the strait. Thankfully, this thick fog layer has helped us get through. We have not sighted any enemy warships. Let's dive down the periscope depth. I am curious if there's anything out there. All right, down to PD, please, and thank you. And reduce speed down. 
slow. And let's take a listen. There's something behind us. Definitely a warship we snuck past. There's something else off to around 225. Something off to 280. Warship moving fast. Okay, so we're not completely in the clear yet. However, she is, in fact, moving away. There's another warship. Oh my god, look how... Look how close we got to that one. And there's also another one here. A lot of these warships are moving away. We got extraordinarily lucky, I think. Let's see, and this one is of mild concern as well. What do we got? Even more warships up here to the north of our current position. Yeah, so we're not out of the woods yet. That's for sure. What time is it? 2100. I think we're going to be okay, though. Let's go ahead and surface the boat and continue on our course at full speed to get the heck out of here. Well, U-75 is now in the Mediterranean, and we did not make contact with the enemy. I do think the storm that is coming in did contribute to our success. I can barely see in front of me. However... Let's get the weather report here. Heavy clouds, no rain, poor visibility. Wind speed is 7 meters per second. So, yeah, the heavy clouds and poor visibility almost certainly helped. I mean, I can't see anything, and I'm sure you can't either. But here we are. We are entering grid CH-74, and now we are clear to engage enemy shipping. I did not want to attack any ships on my way to Gibraltar, but now that we are in the med, I think it is fair game. We have a full complement of torpedoes ready to rock and roll here, so I hope you stay tuned to see that. Detention eased as we put more and more distance between us and the defenses of Gibraltar. The storm persisted for about 23 hours. Our Mediterranean cruise was now underway. During a routine hydrophone check, the operator picked up a single distant contact, slowly closing in on our position. I was determined this would be our first catch up of the patrol. The hunt was on. U-75 is tracking a contact via hydrophone. We are currently at periscope depth and we are going to try to take a look. First things first though, we did get a interesting radio message here, which I figured I would show off. From U-205 to BDU, they passed through Gibraltar. So obviously U-75 was not the only U-boat to head towards Gibraltar. By this date, November 11th, I do believe U-75 reached her new home base of Salamis, but we are running a little behind history here. Here's our contact. She's off to around 058 degrees up scope. Let's take a look. In our bow tubes, we have G7A torpedoes, which have the advantage of the variable speed setting. They can go up to 44 knots. That being said, they do leave a pretty visible bubble trail on the surface of the water from the sound of things though it seems it is just a single merchant this would be a contact that we could use the deck gun against hypothetically if she's not armed but i think for our first attack of the series using a torpedo is warranted i have no visual out there it is quite foggy and frankly this fog is what allowed us to get through gibraltar relatively easily so i'm not going to knock it too much the contact is still pretty distant let's take a listen there she is slow chug definitely a freighter of some sort 
And she is closing, so really it is just a waiting game for us at this point. It has been around 20 or so minutes, so we are going to take another look of scope. 062. And wow, I still do not see anything. This fog is quite heavy. We got nothing out there. She is relatively close. I am actually surprised we cannot see her, but by her track, we are in a pretty good position to fire off a torpedo. Let's actually adjust our course ever so slightly. Yeah, We're heading 175 degrees. We're also going to be pretty close within a kilometer by the time we fire. Let's reduce speed even further and just wait. She's around just over three kilometers out, I think. Medium speed though, so we can guess she's going eight to 10 knots or higher, but I doubt she's going much faster than that down scope. It's currently 8.52. Give it a, a little bit more time and we may actually need to reverse. Let's change our heading 170. We want this to pretty much be a right angle. She is continuing to close. We are going to be nice and close. Torpedoes are all good. Oh, this is going to be quite the attack. Closing in on 700 meters. Let's begin reversing the boat. And we will take a look now. It's almost 9 o'clock. Up scope. Her AOV is going to be to port. There she is. Okay, a small freighter of sorts. Lock on target. I can't make out the flag, but I am going to assume it's an enemy. Merchant ships. It looks like mass stack mast. There are a lot of ships to go through. However, I could be wrong, but I think this may be a Granville type freighter. Here's the Granville freighter, and no, it doesn't look like that's her. The Granville has the structure in the front, so this is just some sort of small merchant. Lots of ships here. I really just need to get the length of this vessel. Type 2 small merchant, length 78 meters, lock. Okay, that works for me. Top speed is 12 knots, that is good to know as well. All right, 78, let's keep closing in on the target. Let's adjust our course, new heading, 200 though. Let's get our bow facing the target and start moving forward. We are going to set range to one kilometer here. Angle on bow, 40 degrees port. We're just going to eyeball it for now. Additionally, let's check what's the weather. Wind speed is seven meters per second. So to avoid a torpedo failure, we are going to look at this chart. So the wind speed here, seven meters per second. We need to set our torpedoes at a running depth of below 2.8 meters to avoid the waves interfering with our torpedoes run. That should be okay. I'll probably set it to four or five. Let's just set it to four. We are going to use an impact pistol, fast torpedo speed. And now we wait a little bit more, down scope. We are all lined up and we are going to take the target speed. It looks like she is flying under a Greek flag, so she is certainly fair game. And to get the target speed, we are going to time the ship from bow to stern, and then we will use the range angle on bow finder wheel here to actually calculate that speed. It's a lot simpler than it looks. Let's see, closing in on the bow, we are moving at three knots. That's why we are taking this time at the zero degree mark. 
so there is not any uh, deviation because of our own ship's movement. Closing in. She is moving pretty quickly, huh? Medium speed. She may be going her top like 10 knots. Passing mark. There we go. So 19 seconds. All right. So the ship's length is 78 meters. We are going to take 19 seconds and drag it all the way over to the 78 mark. And this red dash will get us the target speed. So she is moving at eight knots. Hard to port. Let's turn. Lock on target. We're going to plug in the ship speed of eight knots. Eight knots, probably 700 meters out. And we will adjust AOB here momentarily. Let's keep turning. I'm only going to fire one torpedo at this target. She is unarmed, so if our fish happens to miss, we will be able to engage with the deck gun. Slow our scope just a tad. Do not want our scope to be spotted here. Let's check the map here. Oh my gosh, we are pretty close, but that is good. I do like to take my shots nice and close. The one thing we do have to keep in consideration though is the minimum arming distance of our torpedoes is 300 or so meters. So want to keep that in mind. All right, slow down. Rudder amidships. Perfect, that looks great. Okay, angle on bow. Let's set it to 70 degrees port. I am just going to eyeball this range. 500, we'll do 450. 450 meters by the time we are ready to fire. And now we are going to wait for our gyro angle to be zero. Let's triple check everything real quick. Range 450, angle on bow, closing in on 80 degrees port. Speed of target, eight knots. We are firing one torpedo at a depth of four meters. Impact pistol, fast speed setting. Open tube one. We are going to adjust our AOB in just a bit. Yeah, there we go. All right, tube one. Let's get ready to fire up scope. We are going to fire once our gyro angle here is at zero degrees. Hopefully we are not within arming range. We did get pretty close here. Okay, tube one. Okay, that, that is near perfect. Thankfully it's unescorted, so that is helping. All right, tube one, loss. Tube one away, down scope. There we go. Impact. We have official confirmation she is going down up scope. You can see the massive fireball. She is leaking fuel all over the place and she is essentially dead in the water. We can see our torpedo hit directly underneath the funnel. That is a good kill. All right, down scope. Let's drop down to 60 meters and it is time to get the heck out of here. Increase speed and continue on our course. Well, folks, that is going to do it for today's video. I do hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and comment, especially on the first episode of a new series. It really helps the channel out, and I would greatly appreciate it. 
Also, I'd like to say it feels great to be back in Silent Hunter 3. Anyway, folks, thank you all for watching. This is Wolfpack345 signing off, and I will see you all on the next one.